from CNN was followed by another one within one minute that clarified that I was not dropping out. So what happened to that one, it is unclear. But the bottom line is, we can see what happened, everybody can see what happened, and you can make your own judgment. Dr. Carson, based on thank that. you. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Senator Rubio. I want to stay on the issue of readiness to be president and experience, and questions about you being a first-term senator. Governor Christie warning voters here in New Hampshire against voting for another first-term senator, as America did with Barack Obama in 2008, arguing that you are, quote, not ready to be president of the United States. And Senator Santorum, who we all know dropped out of the race just this week and endorsed you, had a hard time when asked on national television listing your accomplishments as senator. Tonight, what are your accomplishments in the Senate that demonstrate you're ready to be president of the United States? Well, let me say, from protecting the people of Florida from imminent domain abuse, to bringing accountability to the VA, to the Girls Count Act, to sanctioning terrorist groups, I'm proud of my service in the United States Senate and before that in the Florida legislature. I will say, if politics becomes and the presidency becomes about electing the people who have been in Congress or in the Senate the longest, we should all rally around Joe Biden. He's been around a thousand years, he's passed hundreds of bills, and I don't think any of us believe Joe Biden should be president of the United States. And let's dispel once and for all with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. Barack Obama is undertaking a systematic effort to change this country, to make America more like the rest of the world. That's why he passed Obamacare and the stimulus and Dodd-Frank and a deal with Iran. It is a systematic effort to change America. When I'm president of the United States, we are going to re-embrace all the things that made America the greatest nation in the world, and we are going to leave our children what they deserve, the single greatest nation in the history of the world. Senator Rubio, thank you. I do want to ask Governor Christie, Governor Christie, you said fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me when it comes to electing a first-term senator. You heard Senator Rubio make the case that he does have the experience. Your response? Sure. Um, first, let's remember something. Every morning when a United States senator wakes up, they think about what kind of speech can I give or what kind of bill can I drop? Every morning when I wake up, I think about what kind of problem do I need to solve for the people who actually elected me? It's a different experience. It's a much different experience. And the fact is, Marco, you shouldn't compare yourself to Joe Biden, and you shouldn't say that that's what we're doing. Here's exactly what we're doing. You have not been involved in a consequential decision where you had to be held accountable. You just simply haven't. And the fact is, The fact is, when you talk about Hezbollah Sanctions Act that you list as one of your accomplishments and just did, you weren't even there to vote for it. That's not leadership, that's truancy. Um, the fact is that what we need to do, what we need to have in this country is not to make the same mistake we made eight years ago. The fact is, it does matter when you have to make decisions and be held accountable for them. It does matter when the challenges don't come on a list of a piece of paper of what to vote yes or no every day, but when the problems come in from the people that you serve. I like Marco Rubio. And he's a smart person and a good guy, but he simply does not have the experience to be president of the United States and make these decisions. We've watched it happen, everybody. For the last seven years, the people of New Hampshire are smart. Do not make the same mistake again. If I may respond, I was meant to you. Well, I think the experience is not just what you did, but how it worked out. Under Chris Christie's governorship of New Jersey, they've been downgraded nine times in their credit rating. This country already has a debt problem. We don't need to add to it by electing someone who has experience at running up and, and destroying the credit rating of his state. But I would add this, let's dispel with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is trying to change this country. He wants America to become more like the rest of the world. We don't want to be like the rest of the world. We want to be the United States of America. And when I'm elected president, this will become once again the single greatest nation in the history of the world, not the disaster Barack Obama has imposed upon us. Senator Rubio, thank you. I do want to bring in Governor Bush on this Hold because on you've second. made this. Excuse me. If you'd like to respond to the economic. I think he directly right. mentioned me and my record Governor in there. Christie. So I think I get a chance to respond. You see, everybody, I want the people at home to think about this. That's what Washington, D.C. does. Does. The drive-by shot at the beginning with incorrect and incomplete information, and then the memorized 25-second speech that is exactly what his advisors gave him. See, see Marco, Marco, the thing is this. When you're President of the United States, when you're a governor of a state, 
the, the, the memorized 30 second speech where you talk about how great America is at the end of it doesn't solve one problem for one person. They expect you to plow the snow. They expect you to get the schools open. And when the worst natural disaster in your state's history hits you, they expect you to rebuild their state, which is what I've done. None of that stuff happens on the floor of the United States Senate. It's a fine job. I'm glad you ran for it, but it does not prepare you for president of the United States. Chris, Chris, your state got hit by a massive snowstorm two weeks ago. You didn't even want to go back. They had to shame you into going back. And then you stayed there for 36 hours, and then he left and came back to campaign. See, Those are the facts. Here's the bottom line. This notion that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing is just not there true. There it is. He knows exactly what he's doing. There it is. The memorized 25-second speech. Well, that's the, that's the reason is, why this campaign is so important. Because I think this notion, I, I think this is an important point. We have to understand what we're going through here. We are not facing a president that doesn't know what he's doing. He knows what he is doing. That's why he's done the things he's done. You know, That's why we have a president that passed Obamacare and the stimulus. All this damage he's done to America is deliberate. This is a president that's trying to redefine this country. That's why this election is truly a referendum on our identity as a nation, as a people. Our future is at stake. This election is not about the past. It is about what kind of country this is going to be in the 21st century. And if we elect someone like Barack Obama, a Hillary Clinton, a Bernie Sanders, or anyone like that, our children are going to be the first Americans to inherit a diminished country that you know, will not happen. Governor, Obama. Governor Christie, no, we will, we Chris, will, won't you make you know what the shame is? get into this? You know what the shame is, Marco? The shame is that you would actually criticize somebody for showing up to work, plowing the streets, getting the trains run back on time, when you've never been responsible for Chris, that in your entire life. Okay. And the, he didn't and, want to go back. And, and the fact is, I went back, it got done, and here's something. You didn't something want to go back. I went back. Oh, so... Uh, Wait a second. Is that one of the, the skills you get as a United States Senator ESP also? Chris, everybody, I don't you think said it you is. weren't going to go back. The fact is, Marco. He told everyone he wasn't going to go back. And they had to shame him into going Marco, back. Marco, because. And then when he decided to go back, he criticized the young lady saying, what Marco, am I supposed you know to do, what? go back with a mop? By the way, clean up the flood. It gets, it gets, very, go back. It gets very unruly Governor when Christine. he gets off his talking Thank you, Governor. I, I will mention you. Thing. It's your Listen. record. It's not a talking point. It's your record. <laughs> Governor Bush, I'll Thank mention you. your name so that you can come in on this. I and I do want to bring you I into really this. Do. Thank you. I want to bring you in on this because you've made this central to your campaign right here in New Hampshire in the last couple of days. But four years ago, you said of Senator Rubio, he was ready to be vice president. You spoke of his experience yeah. as well. You said he has the fortitude to be a good president. But just this week, you said Senator Rubio accomplished, quote, nothing in the Senate. How do you square the two? Well, first of all, he said the exact same thing about me, that I would make a great vice presidential nominee when Mitt Romney was considering. I said the same thing about Marco. I think we were both right at the time, and Mitt picked somebody else. So let's move on to the 2016 race. Who has the leadership skills? Who has the leadership skills to lead? And I'm proud of the fact that I have 12 Medal of Honor recipients, over 30 admirals and generals that believe that I would be a steady hand as commander in chief, that I served as president, uh, governor of the state of Florida where we cut taxes and reduced government. I took on very powerful interests, forged consensus, fought for my beliefs, implemented them, and the state was better off. We had eight hurricanes and four tropical storms in 16 months. The, t the, whole, cut, the whole state was turned upside down. It required a steady hand. Leadership, you learn this, you learn it by doing it. It's not something that just show up and on the job do it. It's not, it's not to say, look, let's be clear. Marco Rubio is a gifted, gifted politician. And he may have the skills to be a president of the United States. But we've tried it the old way with Barack Obama, with soaring eloquence, and we got we didn't get a leader. We got someone who wants to divide the country up. The next president is going to have to forge consensus to bring about a set of common purposes so that we can move forward we're again gonna, we're gonna on continue, this country. We're going to continue with leadership now and Martha. Senator Cruz, you are a first-term senator as well. Your opponents say you, like Senator Rubio, are not prepared to be commander-in-chief. You have talked tough about threats we face in the Mideast. It was reported just moments ago that the North Koreans test launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. North Korea has nuclear weapons and conducted another nuclear test just last month. The missile that was launched is the kind the North Koreans hope could someday carry a nuclear weapon capable of reaching the United States. How would you respond if commander in chief to that launch? 
Well, I would note initially the fact that we're seeing the launch, and we're seeing the launch from a nuclear North Korea, is the direct result of the failures of the first Clinton administration. The Clinton administration led the world in relaxing sanctions against North Korea. Billions of dollars flowed into North Korea in exchange for promises not to build nuclear weapons. They took those billions and built nuclear weapons. And I would note also the lead negotiator in that failed North Korea sanctions deal was a woman named Wendy Sherman, who Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton promptly recru recruited to come back to be the lead negotiator with Iran. So what we are seeing with North Korea is foreshadowing of where we will be with Iran. With respect to North Korea and what we should do now, one of the first things we should do is expand our missile defense capacity. We ought to put missile defense interceptors in South Korea. South Korea wants them. And one of the real risks of this launch, North Korea wants to launch a satellite. And one of the greatest risks of the satellite is they would place a nuclear device in the satellite as it would orbit around the Earth. And as it got over the United States, they would detonate that nuclear weapon and set off what's called an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse, which could take down the entire electrical grid on the eastern seaboard, potentially killing millions. We need to harden the grid to defend ourselves, and we need missile defense to protect ourselves against North Korea. Well, let me